my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In the first reading, the Israelites said, The Lord has abandoned me. The Lord has forgotten me. My dear friends, these are very strong words, very poignant words addressed to God. Those of you who are parents will learn to understand. If one day your children were to say these same words to you, you have forgotten me, you have abandoned me. My dear brothers and sisters, these words will pierce your heart. My dear brothers and sisters, we can understand where the Israelites were coming from. They were in exile. They lost their land, their kingdom, and their temple. They lost everything. And there were some good people. And they felt that God had abandoned them. When will God restore their fortunes? restore their land and that is why out of their hearts they cried out to God why have you abandoned us and I'm sure my dear brothers and sisters all of us we too feel with the Israelites how often in our lives how many times you also had said the same things to the Lord why have you forgotten me? Why have you abandoned me? Those times when you were suffering because of an illness, because of betrayal, because you in financial difficulties, because you lost your job, because you were suffering under difficult people in your life. And then you asked, where is God? This is a very natural question because we expect God to be there for us, especially in our struggles in life. And if we are going through difficult times, we need to feel that He is with us. And we're still in these difficult times there will be catholics who will come to tell you god is love god is near us he has healed me he has answered my prayers he has given me the fortune to strike for thee everybody struck for thee except you that's the whole problem Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, and you wonder how is it that God is merciful to everyone except you. And that is why we become angry with God. We become resentful that this God is good to everyone. They have encountered Him. They have seen Him. They have experienced Him. But we haven't. That is why many people begin to wonder, is God real? And more so when you live in a secular society today, when God is absent from public life, when the sacred is no longer felt in our midst, <coughs> how can there be a loving God? <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, if you feel that God has abandoned you, that is not the worst thing. Even the church, the house of God, the family of God also have abandoned you. Those times when you need help most, when you were in bereavement and the church was not there for you. The priests were not available when your loved ones were sick in hospital. When your loved one passed away, no one from the Catholic community came to support you. 
those times when you were down and out, when you were falling into depression, everybody tried to stay away from you. You became a nuisance. They are fair weather friends. Only when you are good, when you are healthy, when you can contribute, then the Catholic community welcomes you. Otherwise, no. You know, when the church betrays you and abandons you, it makes you wonder, is the church real? Are the people in church really, truly worshipping Christ, have encountered Him? Or else how do you explain the scandalous behaviour of priests, religious, leaders, laity. And you think the church have abandoned you, at least you would think your family, your friends would have stood with you in your trials. Even family members abandoned you. And it gets even more painful to know that your parents or your spouse are so active in church, very supportive, but not at home. A dichotomy between faith and life. And that makes you even more angry with God. That this God has taken away your loved ones. And the conclusion therefore is, all are hypocrites. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, that is why we can feel with the Israelites when they said, the Lord has abandoned me, the Lord has forgotten me. But the word of God tells us that this is not the case. That is why when God heard these words, His immediate response was one of sorrow. It's just like those of you parents, if you have given your life to your children, you work hard, you sacrifice your time, you labor in the house, you have to go to work, you have to earn the money, come back and continue to tuition your children and do everything for your children and give them everything. And they turned against you and said, you have abandoned me, you have forgotten me. I know how your parents feel because sometimes this is how we priests feel as well. Let me tell you. We priests give our whole life to the service of the people. We are not paid. Every minute, every day, everything we have is for the service of the people of God. And people turn against us and say, you have abandoned me. You have forsaken me. That's why the Lord said, Does a woman forget her baby at the breast? Or fail to cherish the son of a womb? This is unthinkable. No parent, no mother would abandon her son. But the Lord says, Even if that happens, I will not abandon you. Even if these forget, I will not forget you. You all know very well, my dear friends, those of you who are women, those of you who are mothers, no matter how naughty your child is, how irresponsible, how in ungrateful they are. They can be rascals, criminals. You will still love them. You will never give up on them. Because they come from your womb. Because of this attachment, this love for your children. You will do anything. And God is like that. That is why in today's gospel, Jesus said, look at creation, look at the birds, look at the flowers, look at the plants. 
I look after them all. And you know, my dear brothers and sisters, we are worth more than sparrows, than birds. Although this is the year of the rooster. We are worth more than all these. We are children of God. That is why in John 3, 16, St. John said, For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, so that those who believe in Him might not perish, but have eternal life. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is our good shepherd. This cathedral is named precisely after Jesus, the good shepherd. The good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. The good shepherd who seeks for the lost sheep. Every sheep is important. Those who are lost, those who are injured, those who are wounded, those who are broken, and those who are strong. The Lord makes you stronger. Every sheep is important to the Lord. He came to give us life, life abundantly at the cost of his own life. So don't say the Lord has forgotten me, the Lord has abandoned me. It hurts the Lord because he has given everything. He has given his only son and Jesus has given his entire life. And still we can say the Lord has forgotten to me. It grieves the heart of Jesus to hear these words simply because the gospel tells us you men of little faith. You men of little faith. And that is why in the light of what we have heard, what must we do, my dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul tells us in today's second reading, people must think of us as Christ's servants entrusted with the mysteries of God. It means to say from now on, we who have received the mysteries of God, we who have received salvation, the good news, the word of God, we who have encountered Jesus, we need to be His servants. To be servants of the mystery of God. What does it mean? The word mystery, translated from the Greek word, is mysterion. And Latin translates the word mysterion as sacramentum. The word mystery means the plan of God that has been revealed in Jesus. The word mystery means to say we are called to be signs of Jesus. So to be stewards of God's mystery means to say all of us who have been given these mysteries must now be the sign of God's presence in the world. To be channels of His grace, of His love, of His mercy. The gratitude of having received His mercy. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, the church, the cathedral, and all churches included, we must be the hope, a sign of hope for humanity. Today, many people are living aimless life. Eat, sleep, work, enjoy, make money, and die. And then where do they go? Nowhere! They don't know where! They don't believe in God! That's the end of life! Finish! Finished. So ask, how's your dad? Finished. Gone. It means disappeared! But for us, we know. We know what, are we, we, know what we are living for. We are living for eternity. Not just in the next world, now when we share the life of Christ, when we give our lives in love, in service, this is the meaning of life. This is what gives you purposeful living. 
That is what we need today. Purposeful living. Do you have a purpose in life? If you don't have a purpose in life, you can never be happy. No matter how rich you are, how successful you are, you will never find happiness unless you have a real purpose in life. No matter how old are you, you can be young, you can be 80 years old, you can be on the wheelchair, you must have a purpose in life. You must live for someone, live for God, live for love, be a sign of God's presence, a hope to others. Even when you are sick in bed, you still can be a hope by the way you suffer. By the way, you endure the cross. The church must be a home, as I've said at the beginning of this dedication, a home for everyone. Rich, poor, young, old, children. I just received a letter complaining to me. Some churches are not tolerant with children. Some of our lay people cannot tolerate children. A little bit of noise, they want to complain. If that is so, I want to send a letter to your house because your children are making too much noise in your house. Make sure your children from today onwards don't cry. Don't talk too loud because it disturbs your peace at home. Come on, to have children means to say the church is alive. A place for everyone. Whatever sexual orientation you have, whatever race, color, language, and culture, migrants, the church is a home for everyone. Because simply, we are the family of God. He's the father of all. Irrespective, saints or sinners, they all belong to the father. We don't exclude sinners because they too are searching for God. They too are welcome. All are welcome. That is our entrance in. All are welcome. The church must also be precisely a place of mercy. And the most important mercy is to encounter the mercy of God. That's why I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, pray for me and pray with me. I hope that one day this cathedral will be able to offer the sacrament of reconciliation every day, during the day, for all those of you who are seeking for God's mercy. But I need priests. If the priests don't come, I can't be sitting there 24 hours. I've got work to do. But you know, the sacrament of reconciliation is such a beautiful sacrament. Not just only to have priests to hear confession, I want you to pray that there will be confessors who are compassionate, understanding, forgiving. Because sometimes confessors can put this off. You get the wrong confessor, that, was with, that will be the end of your confession. No more confession. Sacrament of mercy, a place of mercy. Mercy also in terms of reaching out to those who are poor, to those who are in need of material help, physical help, and also the rich poor. Because I tell you, all of you here are very rich and also very poor. I was reading the papers this morning about the Samsung, you know. The son arrested. Poor thing, and they are so rich. And the daughter committed suicide at the age of 26. Rich family, are they happy? They're not happy. They have all the money in the world. You look at their lives. Are they happy? You can be rich, but they are poor, poor in love poor in encountering the love of God. They're not happy. People like this, no money, very happy. So you can eat one tan mee afterwards. Huh? Go to the Republic and eat one tan mee. Nice, nice. Mm. Happy, happy. Huh? Chip, 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 chip. Happy, happy. Oh. No need to worry. You don't need to be Samsung chief. You don't need to be... Huh? My dear brothers and sisters, it's not only a place of mercy. Make this also into the place where this is a place of worship. Jesus says, my house must be a house of prayer. This is again my prayer. Please pray for me. 
I want to make this cathedral truly a place of prayer. We have the perpetual adoration room, but that is not enough. I want to bring worship to this place. The Eucharist, of course, the high point of celebration, but not only that, prayer meetings. I want this place to be vibrant, rich in prayer. Private prayer, personal prayer, community prayer. Because only prayer can change this diocese and change the world. That is also my desire. Make this into a house of prayer where people can encounter God and know that God is real. Finally, make this place, my dear brothers and sisters, into the place of fellowship. You know, life is not just all work and all prayer. It's also play. Eh? Must have some fun. No fun. You need to have friends. We need to have a community to support us so that those times when we feel abandoned and we feel lonely, Jesus is there. The worst thing, my dear brothers and sisters, and I can tell you honestly, honestly, no Catholics will ever leave the church if they have a community. Why do Catholics leave the church? Because they are alone. Alone in their faith. That's why those of you who do not belong to any faith community, your faith is at risk. We are not always strong. Even the bishop is not strong. I need your support. You cannot stand alone. You cannot journey alone. We need each other. So, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, let me conclude this homily. I want to say this to you. You know, I'm already 60, you know, this year. I've just finished four years in office. Honestly, I do not know how many more years, although, strictly speaking, the bishop retires at 75. So, technically, I got 15 more years. But I don't think that long. I only think in terms of 10 years. After that, I'm not too sure what will happen to me. I don't say to myself, I've got plenty of time. I give myself 10 years. And then we'll see how. So if you believed in my vision for the diocese, for our country, to build a vibrant, missionary, evangelistic community, then join me. Work with me. Collaborate with me. Be good stewards. If you have talents, share with us your talents. If you have time, share your time with us. If you have resources, share your resources with us. Because let me tell you, as a bishop, everything I have, whether money, time, resources, whatever I have, I use it for the service of the church. So I appeal to you. Let us work together. My time, your time is short. As I have said, I have no ambition as a bishop. I only got a vision. I got the dream. And I ask you to help me to realize this dream. This dream is for everyone. Not even for Catholics only, for the whole of Singapore. This dream is what the Lord has given to me. I'm sharing with you. I'm not bothered whether, honestly, whether even this dream can be realized or not. Because St. Paul says in the second reading, conscience is clear. And my conscience is clear. I'm not worried about how people would judge me as a bishop. St. Paul says, leave it to the end of time. But I'm concerned about how God will judge me. And in all honesty, I feel I have done all I could as a bishop to get the church together, to get religious leaders together, to work as one, to build this dream. My dear brothers and sisters, you have to answer for yourself before God. St. Paul tells us that time will come when God will reveal your secret intentions and you will have to answer before God what the Lord has blessed you with. It is not for me to judge you. 
my dear brothers and sisters, share this dream with me. And this can be a beautiful church for you or your children.